Hello, this is Steve Pavelina, and I'm here in my home with Matt Monarch and Angela Stokes Monarch, who are some raw foodist friends that have come to visit us. And we thought we'd do a little YouTube video to ask you some questions just about the raw food diet and help introduce our, our website visitors to raw foods. So can you tell us first a little bit about how you got started in raw foods and what your background in raw foods was? How did you first learn about this diet and what made you want to do it? Sure. Um, thanks for having us, Steve. Sure. Um, a lot of people go on a raw food diet because you have the potential to heal from degenerative diseases. A lot of people have done that, and so they adhere to a raw food diet. Me, myself, personally, I didn't have any situation occurring. So um, I actually didn't even know a raw food diet existed, and someone handed me a book. It was called Become Younger um, by Dr. Norman Walker, and it actually told me what certain foods, such as refined sugars, processed starches, were doing to my body. I didn't even know a raw food diet existed at the time. And so I read that book overnight, and that was 11 years ago, and I went 100% raw overnight, and I've never looked back since. Um, Angela's story is absolutely profound, if you want to share that. Yeah, um, I went raw seven and a half years ago. I used to weigh nearly 300 pounds before I went raw. Um, I was very ill, very miserable, and a friend lent me a book as well um, called The Raw Family by the Patenkos. And in much the same way, I read the whole book in one night and went totally raw the next day, but I didn't stay totally raw. I did it for like one week in the beginning and then I was like 70, 80% raw for the first couple of years and I'm totally raw again now and I released like 160 pounds from, from doing this. In the first couple of years I released 160 pounds and it stayed off ever since. So that was just the start of it, you know, the physical weight loss and my life changed in every other way imaginable as well. So it's been a huge journey of transformation. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, I can't even imagine you being 300 pounds, but I've seen the pictures on your website. <laughs> yeah, you got to see the pictures on the website. It's yeah. crazy. What, what's your website, by the way? Rawreform.com. Rawreform.com. So put that on the screen, Eric. Yeah, and she has a bunch of uh, e-books you can get there, too, okay. about how to go raw for weight loss and stuff like that. Now, you lost a little bit of weight, too. What, 20 pounds? Or I lost about 20 pounds, yeah. <laughs> I was into working out. I, you know, I, didn't, I, was, I, didn't, I wasn't overweight, so yeah, I just lost 20 pounds. But do you think raw foods will help people lose weight by itself? If that's all they do is add more raw foods to their diet, can people lose weight from eating, from eating raw? Can that assist they, them in their weight loss? They weight? definitely can, yeah. Most people who start to eat raw or something towards this direction release some weight. Because it's all ultimately just about bringing the body and the, your whole being into alignment with your natural state. So it's all about nature, it's about simplicity. So if you're carrying extra weight, physical weight on your body, then it's gonna melt away because the body doesn't need it. And if you're giving the body the fuel that it can actually use rather than stuff that's coming out of a box and a can and the body doesn't recognize, then the body will just naturally come into its natural form. So, so how do you guys do the raw food diet? I mean, how, what do you eat in a typical day? What is your diet like? I'm sure a lot of people are wondering that. They think, how, what do you just eat? Lettuce all day? Or <laughs> carrots? I mean, what, bananas? What is that like? Well, when we first started out, um, we were eating a lot more than we are now. Um, just as the years go by, you just tend to need less and less. But um, I pretty much, you know, just have fruit with maybe some nut butters, blended, a smoothie, things like that, and a salad. Like later in the night. What about you? Yeah, the, the way that we eat now is nothing like we ate in the beginning. So when, um, when I first went raw, I was coming from a place of eating thousands of calories a day prior to that. So I would eat, um, you know, people get scared when they hear about raw food. They think it's just going to be celery sticks and bits of carrot and it's going to be really boring. You can create anything as, as a raw food meal. Absolute gourmet, incredible lush creations, or you can eat really simply. And in the beginning, I wanted all the, the complex stuff, you know, because I was replacing all of those thousands of calories. So, you know, I would eat raw pizzas and raw burgers. And you can just go online and look up raw recipes. There's incredible resources out there and books and videos. These days, we eat a lot simpler. We yeah. eat very, very simple things and a lot of greens, um, vegetable juices. You know, if you showed me seven or eight years ago, the kind of stuff that I eat in a day now, and said this is what a raw foodist eats, I would not have been excited <laughs> to live this lifestyle, you know? Yeah. But that's the point that we've come to now. Yeah. You know, in your experience, what, what is a good way for people to get started with raw foods? Let's say you don't necessarily want to become a raw foodist. 
Right. You just want to start introducing more raw foods in your diet and start seeing some health benefits. Of yeah. What, what would, how would you advise people to get started with raw foods? See, I've been, um, we go around the world talking about raw foods mm -hmm. and we're not, we don't come from the standpoint of like, we're raw Nazis, you got to be raw, da 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 um, Actually, probably 90 to 95% of the people we recommend to do an intermediate healthy whole food cooked food diet. Um, so not 100% raw, yeah. you don't need... Yeah, they, I mean, there's so many diets out there today. I'm sure you've heard of many of them, such as the Zone Diet, the Macrobiotics Diet, the South Beach Diet, and all the creators of these diets, they claim to get results. And I've actually seen a lot of the time where people have gotten results in these types of diets. And um, the reason why they do they get results is there's one common denominator why all these diets succeed. They all leave certain foods out of their diets completely without any exception whatsoever. And the crazy thing about it all is they all leave the exact same foods out, every single one of these diets. It's actually more important what you don't eat than what you actually eat. I mean, you could eat raw foods until you're blue in the face. You're not going to get better unless you eliminate the cause, which are certain processed foods. And I could briefly go over those. If you yeah, what are, so what are, uh, what are some of the foods that we should leave out of our diets that sure. you know, will improve, improve our health? So you're saying that, that the health problems are really caused not by not getting enough. You know, not getting the right vitamins and minerals and nutrients is from it's it's a problem of excess. We're taking in the wrong right. things that are toxifying and poisoning our bodies. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so I like to break down the foods into the following food groups. We've got refined sugars, processed starches, dairy, animal protein, and raw foods. Mm -hmm. So if we understand that what you leave out of your diet completely, without exception, is the way to ultimate health, we want to leave out the foods that are the most damaging to the body. And all these diets leave out two of the same food groups. And that's how they all succeed, and that's why people succeed and lose weight on them and heal from disease. And those two food groups are the refined sugars and the processed starches. Refined sugars is pretty much anything with white sugar or anything that's sugar that's been processed. And processed starches are things like bread, baked items, pasta, and stuff like that. However, the gluten in the processed starch is what's so damaging to the body. And what a lot of people do is they a lot of these diets use gluten-free grains, such as steamed quinoa, millet, buckwheat. I've seen wheat and gluten-free pasta baked potatoes, you know, without margarine, maybe coconut oil or something like that. I've seen brown rice and beans because none of that stuff has gluten on it. So, so some of the, uh, a lot of foods actually have both of those in it, you know, like the processed starches and the sugars, cookies, yeah. cakes, um, even just, uh, you know, some of the processed salad dressings, you know, things you can buy in stores are going to have a lot of a mixture of, of these, uh, these abominable combinations of, of uh, things that are really poisoning your body. Yeah, that's the key right there. If you could just eliminate those two things, I mean, you could live to be a healthy, ripe old age. I mean, we're vegan, and I, you're vegan too, and, you know, we, I, I have some sort of an animal activist in me a little bit, you know, so it's like, it's not as damaging as refined sugars and processed starches. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, what they do is they become vegetarian and eliminate that stuff and load up on the stuff that's more damaging to the body. Not that I recommend animal protein, but from a scientific standpoint, it's less damaging to the body than those other foods. I noticed in your book you, were, you recommended eliminating the processed starches before eliminating animal protein. Yeah. That was actually more important. I found yeah. that really interesting because like many other vegetarians, I went the other way. I started you know, eliminating the animal proteins sure. and then just kept doing the processed starches like pasta and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that for a while. From a moral standpoint, maybe it's a little backwards, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so that's fascinating. So... So that's, that's really where to begin on your path of raw foods. It's not so much about adding the raw foods in. It's about getting the bad stuff out. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Yeah. But aren't, aren't those bad foods also addictive? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Physiologically addictive. You know, the, those things trigger off all kinds of neurons in the brain. And the, most people at this point are chronically attached to things like breads and pastas and cakes and cookies for those exact reasons. You know, they're physically addicted to them. And it can really feel like a struggle to get away from those things. And if you can do that, then all the better. You know, you'll, you'll really be allowing your body to go to the next level of health. We want to thank you for sharing these tips. And I think they'll be really helpful to our visitors. And cool. Everyone go visit rawreform.com. And Matt, what's, what's your site? Um, we have a TV show we do every single day. Okay, TV show. Raw the Raw Food World. Food. TV. The Raw Food World. TV. And .com is our, our raw food store. Okay. And the Raw Food World. .com. Check it out, everyone. Thank you.